Hey guys, thanks for joining us today. Um, today I'd like to take you through and show you um, what's required in rebuilding common rail injectors. The one I'm holding in my hand, 2003 to 2007 Cummins 5.9. Well, the, the nozzle wouldn't make it different. It's actually a 2004 and a half to 2007. Uh, with the exception of the nozzle, the injectors are the same. Um, so, I watched a video a couple of days ago um, online um, there's some companies out there selling like a little kit uh, it comes with a nozzle and some springs and uh, the check ball and um, high pressure seal really doesn't have anything much more than that in it and they want to lead you to believe that you can rebuild these common rail injectors yourself with simple hand tools it is impossible um, these are super high precision, super close, super tight tolerances here. We're dealing with, you know, fractions of millimeters, microns. You know, the, uh, the armature lift in here is less than 60 microns. Um, that's a very small amount. And these have calibrations. There's four different calibration shims in here. Um, there's two springs. There's actually three springs. Um, you have your nozzle, your control valve, uh, your ball and your cap, and uh, your solenoid, of course, your coil up here. So, and, and the body itself, and the nozzle, and, you know, we have, uh, there, there's just a lot going on in here. Actually, there's, there's more calibration than that. We have uh, the nozzle output, which uh, is either a shim or a pointer. Uh, we've got a spring, and then we've got a shim beneath this spring. Uh, to set the spring rate, all right, and then up here in the other end, uh, we have an armature that has a spring on it, um, actually two, it's got a return spring, actually it's got two return springs, but it's got a main high tension return spring with a shim um, underneath it to, to set its spring tension rate, and then we have an air gap adjustment here, which determines, you know, how far once the armature is at full lift, you know how close it is from the actual surface of the magnet so so we've got a shim for that to adjust the air gap and then on the other side we've got a shim to determine our armature lift you know how far it can travel from the seat uh, to allow the actuation for the injector so there's a lot to this and you know these specs aren't available online and you know, anyone with a wrench can, can take one of these things apart. You know, there's no special skill involved in taking one of these things apart. Of course, there's a technique to anything, and the more you do it, the more you realize it's not just fasteners and torque settings, that, you know, there's a little more to it than that as well. So, it, it's really not that simple. There's, there's no information available out there, and there's a good reason for that, because... The manufacturer doesn't want just anyone out there messing with these things. That, that's the reason they don't provide information. Um, this is the life of your engine. If something happens here, you're going to be putting an engine in your vehicle. Um, and it's predictable. Um, consider if you get um, you know, a chunk of dirt or debris in this fuel inlet here. Well, I've got to turn around here where you can see it. If you get a, a chunk of debris in here, and it goes in and it, it fouls up the passage for this control valve, um, it's, it's, it's just going to be free to do whatever it wants to do. And uh, this is what's going to happen as long as uh, the pressure coming in here is greater than the spring pressure holding the nozzle closed, it's going to go wide open and you're going to be pumping out 200 milliliters worth of fuel into your combustion chamber, you know, in just a matter of seconds. So... Not anybody just needs to be doing this. And obviously, you know, we have the secondary consideration above this is emissions. You know, you get these things out of calibration and, you know, your timing is off or, you know, it's not closing when it needs to. So it becomes, you know, a fuel uh, regulation problem. Not regulation as much as administrative regulation, but regulation as far as the governing, the control of the injector. It's going to you know, it's going to be later to open potentially, and it's going to be later to close, so your timing is going to be way off, and it potentially can stay open longer, you know, due to extra clearance, due to things traveling. Uh, you know, what a lot of people don't understand is 
the amount of time that these things are actually open, you know, under uh, stock programming, uh, high duration is going to be less than two milliseconds. Um, a millisecond is one one thousandth of a second. Typically, these things are in microseconds. One microsecond is one millionth of a second, and it's it's even hard to fathom that. So, if we're talking, you know, a thousand uh, microseconds, that that equals one millisecond, and it's one one thousandth of a second to get you all the fuel that you need to make you know 800 or a thousand horsepower well it takes a little bit more than that but you can kind of see where we're going here so imagine that, that there's something wrong here and this thing is open for two milliseconds or it's open for five milliseconds or it hangs open for 500 milliseconds a half a second you know 500 millionths of a second which will be, you know, 500,000 U.S. Imagine it, it hangs open for that long in the amount of fuel that can be delivered in such a short amount of time. You can see how critical this is, and just somebody that thinks they can take something apart doesn't really need to be messing with this thing at all. You know, if they want to find out what's going on and then send it back as a core, you know, by taking it apart and looking at it, I don't see a thing in the world wrong with that. But there, there's so many people, and this is what's wrong today, there's so many people who think they know what they're doing and they can do this, and we get injectors in here all the time that people thought they knew what they were doing, and they've sold these things to someone else, and they're junk. They're not in calibration anywhere. Uh, we put them in the test bench, and you know, you, you got one that they've left a shim out of, and it's putting out twice as much fuel as the others, and one of them is stuck wide open. You know, what's going to happen if the customer goes to put that in his engine and this guy has got a, a good seller rating on, you know, some online auction site and, you know, here he's taking a wire brush and shined the thing up and stuck him a nozzle on there and here you go. These are, you know, uh, a famous company's injectors for nothing. Hey, don't, don't believe it. Don't buy into it. You know, uh, you get what you pay for. So we're going to switch to camera view here, and we're not just going to try to baffle you with a bunch of words. We're going to show you what it really takes to be able to do this. So hang on just a second while I switch the camera angle here, and I'll show you some of the parts required to do this. Okay, so we've got shims. All these boxes are shims. And, you know, there, there's, probably, there's probably well over $3,000 worth of shims here. And then we've got two other boxes here with shims in them. Then you got your parts. You got high pressure seals. You know you've got uh, you know you got springs and and uh, check balls and you know just all kinds of different stuff that you have to have to do this. And then of course you got your nozzles and you've got your control valves and you know one accolade to Bosch. They're the only ones that make common rail parts worth putting in anything, in my opinion. So uh, definitely, that's what we use here. Anything else, we've had trouble with it. We've tried other stuff, but you know, once you get burned, it's hard for you to go back to it. Uh, tools, it takes all these gauges. These are all Michitoyo gauges. And most of them we've had to make. Uh, a couple of these, these two are spring tension gauges so we can set the uh, armature return spring. We can set our point of injection and uh, you know uh, some other specifications we measure uh, lift with this one as well um, pinnel lift uh, and then we've got uh, micrometer have to you know have to have these to, to measure your shims because you're dealing with uh, thousands of a millimeter so if you can see here uh, this gauge goes uh, you know you can see three decimal places uh, behind the behind the uh, behind the solid or the the whole number there so, you know, you move these things a tiny bit in your shims and it makes a huge difference in the timing and the output of the injector. So, you know, you got to have this stuff. If you don't have this and you don't have this shim selection and you don't even know where it goes, you don't even need to consider rebuilding these common rail injectors. And, you know, secondary to that, uh, we have all these shims. We have a test bench and uh, it's accurate. The results are repeatable. But you can set them all to spec uh, using these gauges and all these shims, and you put them in the machine. You're more than likely you're going to have to go back for several of them 
and readjust them because not all the nozzles flow exactly the same. Not all the control valves react exactly the same. They should, but I've had some of these control valves, genuine Bosch ones, and it would put out 30 liters or 30 milliliters per minute more fuel than, than another valve. There was something defective. I don't know if it was hanging up or, or what. We never even you know, really tried to figure out what was going on, but I did swap the valve in two different injectors and you know, the valve was the problem. I replaced the valve and it was back where it should be. So even if you were putting parts in here, you're specking them out with your gauges, putting everything back in specification, even if you bought a brand new Bosch injector and you measured where everything was on it and you made your standards for your gauges, you know, to set them all the same amount, you're going to find a difference in the way they operate on the test bench. That's just the way it is. So uh, for anyone to think this is simple and they should be doing it, I'm trying to show you that it's really not. It's really expensive to get into doing this. There, there's probably, honestly, with the gauges and all, there's five or six thousand dollars sitting here, and I could put it in a little tiny box, you know, uh, fitting a, a medium flat rate USPS box, you know, that costs fifteen dollars to ship it anywhere in the country, and it's it's five or six thousand dollars worth of stuff sitting here, easy. Um, so that that's kind of what's going on. Um, we don't want to tell you it's impossible, and you know if you got the means, if uh, if you've got the money and you think this is something you want to get into doing, uh, we'd be inclined to help you. Um, we're going to show a a video of us going through uh, one of these five nine injectors, maybe be LB seven, but we're going to go through an injector. We're going to show you that it's bad on the bench, and then we'll go through and we'll show you the process, cleaning the parts, measuring stuff. And rebuilding it. We're not going to give you any specs. You know, we're going to we're going to show you uh, how how you do it. We're not going to show you all the specs. Um, so, you know, just kind of take that for what's worth. And then we're going to run it in the machine, and uh, you'll see the before. We're going to run it and show you it's bad, and then we're going to rebuild it and show you why it's good. So we're going to show you why it's bad, and then why it's good. And the biggest thing to consider is super high pressures and super short duration you know some of these tests we run on on the bench the injector is is on for you know uh, 160 millionths of a second and you don't get hardly any output at that even though it's under high pressure so it's that's what they designed these things for why is it that way okay it, it's that way for efficiency and for lower emissions the higher the pressure, the greater the atomization, and the, the more quickly the fuel burns and the more completely it burns. So uh, we've seen them trending toward smaller nozzle passages and greater pressures. You know, your CP4 stuff today is, you know, with the piezo injectors, it's, it's 2200 bar, and, you know, the holes in the, uh, in the discharge nozzle are really small so you know you, you just get a super fine mist of fuel so typically what they want to do is they want to have a greater hole count with smaller holes so when the fuel comes out it's just foof and it's burning you know and it's done it doesn't even really probably uh, encroach outward of the injector that much before it's just coming out and burning and igniting you know when it uh, when it's going on so I um, hope not to discourage anyone who may want to try this. You know, we sell uh, the tools and we offer the training to do this. Uh, we also rebuild these injectors. We don't openly advertise it. But uh, this is some of what goes into it. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you've got any questions, uh, we'll have links in the description, uh, email and website, so you can go on there. If you want any injectors tested, we charge $40 a piece. Uh, to baseline them and see what you got and we can rebuild them give you an estimate on doing those as well um, so uh, contact us if you need anything and uh, we thank you for watching have a wonderful day